All right, everybody, we are watching the James Gunn video talking about DC Studios. What's going to be happening in the future with my live reactions? Here we go. Boom. Hey, everybody, I'm James Gunn. Hello, I'm James. I'm the co CEO of DC Studios. So, as many of you know, DC has been disconnected in film and television for a long time. And it's one of you know, our jobs, mine and Peter's, is to come in and make sure the DCU is connected in film, television, gaming, and animation. That the characters are consistent, played by the same actors, and it works within one story. And okay. if something is outside of that, like Matt Reeves' Batman or Todd Phillips' Joker or Teen Titans Go, that it is clearly labeled as DC Elseworlds, outside of the mainstream DCU continuity. Now, Peter and I have gotten pretty lucky in terms of the four projects that are coming out over the next year. First, we have Shazam! Fury of the Gods. Shazam! has always been off kind of in his own part of the DCU, so he connects very well. That moves directly into The Flash, a fantastic movie that I really love that resets the entire DC universe. Then to move into Blue Beetle, a fantastic film about a kid who's a marvelous part of the DCU, and then into Aquaman 2, which leads directly into our next few projects, which I'm gonna tell you about now. So, Peter and I, along with a group of very talented writers, have started to map out an eight to 10 year plan of what DC Studios will be in film, television, and gaming. This first chapter is called Gods and Monsters. Now this, what I'm about to tell you, is a part of the first chapter. It's not the entire first chapter. The first <laughs> hey, John, project right is on. Creature Commandos. Creature Commandos what? is an animated series. I've written all the episodes. Something we're gonna do that's a little bit different at DC is we're gonna have characters move into animation, out of animation, usually having the same actor play their voice as who plays them in live action. Okay, okay, the I like that idea. The next project up is Waller. This is a story of Amanda Waller, played by Viola Davis. Viola cool. Davis is going to team up with members of Team Peacemaker. And this is a story that's been created by Crystal Henry, who did Watchmen, and Jeremy Carver, who created the Doom Patrol. It is a fantastic story that's out of this world, and I can't wait for people to see it. Okay, next up is the big one, the true beginning of the DCU. This is called Superman Legacy. This is being written by me. I'm in the middle of it. I'm having a great time doing it. And Superman will be released into theaters July 11th, 2025. Okay, the next Jeez. thing is a big premiere HBO television Such series. Such a long time from Lanterns. now. This is a story of a couple of Green Lanterns, Jon Stewart and Hal Jordan. And we have a few other Lanterns peppered in there. But this is really a terrestrial-based TV show, which is almost like True Detective with a couple of Green Lanterns who are space cops watching over precinct earth in it they discover a terrifying hey, mystery that ties into our larger story of the dcu yeah we're Next watching this video getting reactions we'll the jump back to authority the authority is a passion project of mine it's based on the marvelous wildstorm characters we are now bringing into the dcu and will interact with all of our primary dcu characters the authority are a group of superheroes who think the world is broken and they want to fix it by any means necessary. I think it's a very different look at superheroes. We're doing a television series called Paradise Lost. Paradise Lost is a story of Paradise Island, usually known as Themyscira, which is the birthplace of Wonder Woman. It's almost okay. like Game of Thrones with Westeros, but with all of the inhabitants of Paradise Island. The introduction of the DCU's Batman is the brave and the bold. The Brave and the Bold is the story of Batman and his actual son, Damian Wayne. This is based on Grant Morrison's great comic book run. Damian Wayne is my favorite Robin. He's a little assassin who Batman tries to get in line. And so this is the story of the two of them and the beginning of sort of the Bat family in the DCU. Next up is a TV series called Booster Gold. Booster, <laughs> Booster Gold is Cold. one of comics' really popular cult heroes. He is a fascinating guy. He's a loser from the future who uses <laughs> future technology to come back to present day and become a superhero so that people will love him. Oh, it's like it four minutes, It is basically the superhero story of imposter syndrome on an HBO Max series. One of my favorite comic book series from last year was Tom King's run on Supergirl, Woman of Tomorrow. And so we're going to turn that into a big science fiction epic film. Now, Superman is a guy who was sent to Earth 
and raised by loving parents. Whereas Supergirl in this story, she is a character who was raised on a chunk of Krypton. She watched everybody around her perish in some terrible way. So she's a much more jaded character. And that brings me to Swamp Thing, the last thing we're going to talk about. A very dark horror story in the origins of the monster who is Swamp Thing. And although it's totally outside of the rest of the DCU, it will still feed into the rest of the stories. Anyway, those are the stories that I can tell you about right now. I've loved the DC characters since I was a child. They're incredibly important to me. I knew that this was a once-in-a-lifetime opportunity to do something very different. One of the things that's very important for me in all of these movies and TV series is that the director's vision and the vision of the writers and all of the creators is unique and something special. Storytelling is always king. That's all that matters to us. And I want to be true to those stories. I want to be true to you guys and really give you something different than you've ever seen before. Anyway, thank you, everybody. I appreciate you watching. I hope this was exciting for you because it's really exciting for me. And I can't wait to start to dive into these stories with you guys on this grand adventure. Thank you so much. Okay. Um... Well, it's going to be separate from the Reeves' world and from the Todd Phillips' world. Those are else, else, else world stories, which, you know, as an auteur, a filmmaker, when you're wanting to craft a piece of art that's worthy of such praise as the Joker and the Batman, you don't want to be, I think, pigeonholed or stifled into what you can write or what you can do with the character if it has to connect to a much larger story. But I would applaud going for it at least because having a such well-grounded Batman interacting with a god like Superman uh, would be really cool. But it looks like that's not what's uh, going to happen. So, all right. Um, I mean, what do you think, chat? Yeah. So it's not a full reboot. He's still using actors from Peacemaker. Viola Davis, who's great as Amanda Waller. It's not a full reboot. Um, which is just kind of odd. <laughs> uh, I'm not saying it's bad. I'm just saying it's just a bit odd. But... Uh, I mean, I could see things that were so beloved continuing on, you know? Um, because the viewership has to be there. You have to go where the audience is or the audience is willing to to pay for. And they were not willing to pay for Black Adam, which is why we're in the situation we are, we are right now. So very intriguing. Okay, chat, thanks for letting me uh, indulge in looking at the slate, uh, the official announcement from James Gunn, who I do, uh, I do like his style. I do uh, trust him as a storyteller, but um, this is a big undertaking. And as long as the quality of the story is there, which he said at the end, which he did say at the end, and I really appreciated what he had to say about the quality of storytelling, which really, really matters. Well, in essence, we have so many quality, we have so much quality in the stories that have been told in the comic books and in the animation that Warner Brothers has had for many, many years. The animated series, the Justice League, all phenomenal. That should be the gold standard. And if they can go past that, if they can if they can take the best of those storylines and evolve them, and as he said, create something new, something we haven't seen yet, I'm all for it. I'm all for it. Swamp Thing better be rated R. Swamp Thing better be rated R. There better be movies in the DCU that are rated R. Because there are some stories, when they're told, they're not meant for children. Swamp Thing is crazy. Uh, some deep, deep stuff in Swamp Thing. I mean, the nature is able to capture the essence of a human and replicate the human rather than the human becoming the monster. It's like nature is... is embodying, literally, a human. 
in order to enact revenge. I mean, it's some deep stuff that Alan Moore wrote. So those are my thoughts, chat. I'd love to hear your thoughts down below in the comments. And uh, let's be supportive. Let's be optimistic. Let's really embrace all the good things that DC has had to offer across all platforms, especially video games, uh, but in the comics and in television and animation. And if they are able to lean in towards those jewels, those diamonds of stories that we've experienced in animation, that I think that's a really good track to go down. We'll have to wait and see. And uh, I think The Flash is going to be just a huge linchpin a huge pivot point, I should say, uh, for the reset and what happens in that movie. I'm hearing good things. I keep hearing good things about Flash. So uh, we will just have to wait and see. All right. Let's do it.